And the more you focus on you, the more you're going to mess it up. Because it doesn't depend on you. It depends on Jesus Christ. So I focus on him. He did it perfect. The more I focus on him, the more I watch him and learn from him and listen to what he's saying to do, the, the more I'll start to look like him in the flesh. In the spirit, though, I am God sees me perfectly righteous, perfectly holy, perfectly forgiven, as if I never sinned. When God looks at you, he sees Jesus Christ. I had, a, I had a vision one time. I know that sounds weird. I'm sorry. I'm a weirdo. I had a, I had a vision one time. I was, I was, I was um, studying on the prodigal son. And did you know that Jesus is telling a story about the father? He's telling a story about the pro man. Prodigal means extravagant. And so we call the story the prodigal son. But really, it's about the extravagant father. <laughs> oh, man. And so in this... Jesus was telling me through this vision that this is what, this is what happens when you come home. When, you, when, you, when he, he's waiting for you and he sees you coming from a long way off. And when he sees you, he, run, he stops everything. And he runs out to meet you. And then he throws a party. <laughs> Steak and cake. For me, it'll be medium rare strawberry cake with cream cheese icing. I don't know what you're doing. But in, in this vision, I was nervous. Uh, it was the end of my life, and I was, I was walking up to the gates of heaven, and I was nervous, you know? And then as I'm walking up, you can hear singing and hustle and bustle, and out of all the things the angels are doing in heaven, and I was like, Oh my gosh, this is it. This is, this is judgment, man. I'm coming up to the gates of heaven. This is it right here. And then all of a sudden, everything got completely quiet. Freaked me out in this vision. And God stood up off his throne, and he pulled up his robe, and he ran out to meet me. And he, he hugged me, and he kissed me, and he welcomed me into the kingdom of God. That's what the story is about. And someday, those of us that are in Christ, that's what's going to happen when we start to go up to the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. And I believe that there's going to be, just as the angels celebrate whenever one of us give our hearts to God, I believe that they'll be celebrating as God runs out to meet one of us who's coming into the kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. Can we just give Jesus some praise real quick about what he's going to do? Amen. Woo! Give him some prayers. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Jesus! Jesus! You guys can sit down. To my family, that's what Grandpa heard yesterday when he entered the kingdom of heaven. Yes. Amen. Proverbs 25.2 says this. It is the glory of God to conceal things, but the glory of kings is to search things out. Man, I don't, <laughs> I'm not saying this to talk bad about anybody or, 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 or talk up crossroads, so don't, get, don't take this the wrong way, but I was talking to someone and they said, you know, we really like Crossroads. We like the way, we like the spirit there. Uh, I always feel the spirit. They never go into Crossroads without feeling the spirit of God. But I, I wanted to go somewhere where, where the doctrine is a little deeper, where we can go a little deeper. And so we don't feel like we're getting that at Crossroads. Okay? First of all, I would say to every one of you guys here, if you ever decide to leave Crossroads, be blessed. Do whatever God tells you to do. Go wherever God tells you to go. I will never condemn you for leaving crossroads or as long as you're doing what God's telling you to do. Okay? So listen to the Holy Spirit. If he says stay here, stay here. 
If he says go, then go. I want you to do whatever God says to do. But I want to address the deeper thing. If, if I have a treasure map and X marks the spot, let's say the X is right here. If I dig here, it doesn't matter how deep I go. Right? I'll never get the treasure. I can dig and dig and dig. I can dig so deep that I'll dig a hole that I'll never get out of. But if I dig where the treasure's at, <laughs> then I'll get what I came to get. How many of you guys came for some treasure this morning? Amen. I don't know how deep we're going to go this morning, but we're going to we're going to keep it on the X. Yeah. We're going to keep it on the cross. Yeah. We're going to we're going to dig for treasure that is Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I don't want to go so deep in something else that don't matter, man. We're going to talk about Jesus this morning. We're going to talk about the kingdom of heaven. We're going to talk about being free and forgiven. We're going to talk about being married to Jesus Christ instead of the laws and rules and regulations of religion. You guys ready for some treasure? Amen. All right, let's turn over to Romans chapter 7. I am so excited to preach Romans chapter 7. Man. So, a lot of places would be expecting me to preach Romans 7, like, like what I'm about to tell you, because they're like, well, yep, they preach that grace over there, they preach you can do whatever you want, it doesn't matter because you're still going to heaven. And that is, that is not what we're preaching over here, okay? So, Romans, a lot of people will use Romans 7 as an excuse to sin. Can't help it. Paul struggled with it. You can read it right here that Paul wanted to do what's right, but he couldn't. And so, man, that's good news for me because I want to do what's right, but I can't. I'm going to destroy that this morning. That is not the truth. Let me, let me, let me sh see what chapter 7 is sandwiched in between real quick, okay? For when you were, were, for when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. But what fruit were you getting at the time from the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the fruit you get leads to sanctification and its end, eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's the very end of Romans chapter 6. The very beginning of Romans chapter 8. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Jesus Christ from the law of sin and death. What are we sandwiched? Romans 7 is sandwiched in between. You have been set free. Sin no longer has dominion over you. You don't have to sin. You have a choice. You only have a choice because of Jesus Christ. He set you free from the law of sin and death. You're no longer a slave to that. You're still going to mess up. Straight up, man. You're still gonna, you are still going to mess up, but you don't have to. It's not like people read Romans chapter 7, they're like, I, I just can't help it. That's not true. Right. You have everything you need inside of you to keep from sinning. The Word says that God makes a way out of every temptation. Sometimes you don't take the way out. God knew you weren't going to take the way out when you didn't take the way out. You're still forgiven. You're still righteous. You're still holy. But hopefully you'll listen to the Holy Spirit that says, hey, man, you're righteous. You know what that means? You're better than that. I'm not going to condemn you for it. I'm not going to send you to hell for it. I'm not going to judge you for it because you're in Christ. But look, you should be getting more like Christ every single day. So we should learn from that situation. And next time this situation comes along, let's choose the right thing. Because you are righteous. You are holy. You are a representative of Jesus Christ. No condemnation. But let's do better. Amen. 
<laughs> okay, Romans chapter 7. Or do you not know, brothers, for I am speaking to those who know the law. We're about to get into this. What, what the word know means there is like a, a relationship. Like I know my wife. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I know her. I know everything about her. I know her. She's my wife. And so this is what this is talking about when it says, I'm speaking to those who know the law. That is the most important thing that we can get out of Romans chapter 7 today is Paul is speaking to those who know the law, those who are married to the law, those who are trying so hard to keep the rules, those who are trying so hard to be good, so hard to do what God is saying to do, that they're, they're man, when you're trying to keep the rules and you're trying to keep the law and you're trying to keep from sinning, all the focus is on you. And the more you focus on you, the more you're going to mess it up. Because it doesn't depend on you. Right. It depends on Jesus Christ. So I focus on him. He did it perfect. The more I focus on him, the more I watch him and learn from him and listen to what he's saying to do, the, the more I'll start to look like him in the flesh. In the spirit, though, I am God sees me perfectly yeah. righteous, perfectly holy, perfectly forgiven, as if I never sinned. When God looks at you, he sees Jesus Christ. Yeah. 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 For I am speaking to those who know the law, those who are married to the rules, yeah. married to religion. That's who we're talking to. That is the law binding on a person only as long as he lives. For a married woman is bound by law to her husband while he lives, but if her husband dies, she is released from the law of marriage. Accordingly, she will be called an adulteress if she lives with another man while her husband is alive. But if her husband dies, she is free from that law, and if she marries another man, she has not been an adulteress. So we're not talking about marriage, guys. We're not talking about divorce or anything like that. God is using this as an example, saying that, if you're, if you're married and you want to be with another man and you go and do that, then you're committing adultery. But if your husband dies, then you can marry another and you're not committing adultery. We, by sin, we are married to the law. And the only way out is death. Good news, Jesus died for you. Likewise, my brothers, you also have died to the law through the body of Christ so that you may belong to another. Woo! To him who has been raised from the dead in order that we may bear fruit for God. For while we were living in the flesh, our sinful passions aroused by the law. Did you guys catch that? The more I preach the law, the more I preach the rules, the more you're going to sin. <laughs> and so, like I said last week, man, we've been getting this wrong for so long. I see, I see you messing up, and it, my temptation is to be like, you know what the law says about that? You know what the Bible says about adultery? Don't. <laughs> but what I really be, need to be doing is telling you, stop focusing on yourself and all your selfish wants and needs and focus on Jesus Christ yeah. and what he did for you. And then it's a miracle you will start to live right. If you'll, if you'll believe right, you'll live right. You got to renew your mind. You got to change your mind. You got to repent from your old way of thinking. But now we are released from the law, having died to that which held us captive, so that we serve in the new way of the Spirit and not in the old way of the written code. What shall we say then? That the law is sin? What's the JWB? Huh? Hell no. <laughs> the law is not sin, yet if it had not been for the law, I would not have known sin. For I would not have known what it is to covet if the law had not said, you shall not covet. But sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, produced in me all kinds of covetousness. 
The more I preach, do not covet, the more you will covet. It will stir up sin. That, that's not me. That's not me making anything up, guys. That's right out of this right here. That's what Paul said. The more I preach the rules, the more I preach the law, the more you will sin. Got to preach Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's the only way out. Come on, Jimmy, that's right. It's the only real freedom. There is no religion. There's only relationship with Jesus Christ that will yes. set you free. No religion can yes. do that for you. Yes. Amen. For apart from the law, sin lies dead. I was once alive apart from the law, but when the commandment came, sin came alive and I died. The very commandment that promised life proved to be death for me. For sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, deceived me. And through it, it killed me. So the law, listen guys, the law, almost every Sunday we preach about law and grace. And that's because of this. If you keep living by the law and the rules and religion, you will never be free. So that's why, that's why we talk about this all the time. Because... A lot of you guys don't feel free. Yeah. You still struggle with, even though I mess up, I'm holy. Even though I, I have bad thoughts, I'm still righteous. You're still struggling with that. So we're not done preaching about it yet. Because you can't be set free until you realize that you're not under law, you're under grace. Yeah. So we'll keep talking about it until I see an explosion of freedom in here. Woo. I have to. I'm not going to waste my breath on anything else that's not going to set you free. It has to be about Jesus. It has to be about grace. And I have to keep telling you, you're not under those rules and regulations anymore. Just listen to Jesus. Yeah. So the law, you guys might think that I'm preaching against the law like the law is some terrible thing. And that's not what I'm saying at all. Listen to this. So the law is holy and the commandment is holy and righteous and good. The law is holy, righteous, and good, but it has no power to make you holy, righteous, or good. It can only tell you that you're not yeah. holy, righteous, or good. Man. So what's the answer? Jesus Christ, who is holy, righteous, and good, has the power to make me holy, righteous, and good. What the law could never do, God did it. Jesus did it. Did that which is good then bring death to me? JW? <laughs> Hell no. You guys okay? You guys okay? <laughs> I'm not just trying to cuss in church. I'm just, I want to I wanna, wanna fully get the point across that this is how, this is how strong Paul was saying. These, it, this is not, the way you've thought it always has been, it's, it's not that way. You don't have to sin. You don't have to be under law. Jesus has paid the price. You don't have to keep living like that. Hell no. Do you, do you sin on purpose because Jesus has prayed, paid the price? Hell no. We don't do that. It's, it's got to be that strong. All the translators of the Bible, they didn't know how to write it down. How do we write that down? That's strong. Man. <laughs> you guys all right? It was sin producing death in me through what is good in order that sin might be shown to be sin and through the commandment might become sinful beyond measure. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh sold under sin. I'm going to stop for a minute. As we read the rest of this, I'm going to stress, I'm going to stress some words that Paul uses in this text, and it's unlike anything else that Paul ever writes in any of his letters, and hopefully you can see what's going on here. Verse 13 says, Did that which is good then bring death to me? By no means. It was sin producing in me through what is good, in order that the sin might be shown to be sin, and through the commandment might become sinful beyond, me beyond all measure. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh sold under 
under sin. For I do not understand my own accusations. For I do not do what I want. But I do the very thing that I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law that is good. Now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that I am that nothing dwells in me that is in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want. I just keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. Are you getting, are you getting the point? I, 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 me, me, me. To sum up real quick what Paul was saying, who will deliver me from me? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Be blessed. Yeah!